Okay, just doing a sound test here, and we seem to be going live on live stream. This is this will be the third Kesh Health workshop, uh, third in this series. There was a couple of other health workshops previous, but this is the third in this series, along with the Knowledge Seeker workshops, and um, <clears throat> we'll be live with. Um, uh, Dr. Elia Kostova and uh, Mr. Kesh from the Spaceship Institute, as well as some of the other knowledge seekers from the Spaceship Institute. I think Marco and John and uh, maybe even Armin will show, I'm not sure. And so, uh, without further ado, uh, I know, well, a little bit more ado. Uh, Elia is going to be talking about the skull and the uh, bones of the face in particular today and um, we'll be uh, relating that to the emotional part of the brain as well. Okay, um, Elia, are you there at the Spaceship Institute? Yeah, hello to everyone. Um, good morning, good evening, whatever to all the world from Spaceship Institute. So today we start with the third health workshop and the subject is the skull bones, the face bones and how they're related with the emotional part of the brain. For that purpose, we will uh, go like a review of the all skull bones and the embryology development of the neural system because it's important to follow the embryology development of the neural system and see in in what state and in which part just um, starts to develop the emotional part of the brain. So we started with the first picture, please, Rick, could you show on the live stream? It's number zero in your list. It's not that, the number zero. The face, the face picture is just picture for a live stream announced. Find the zero picture, number zero. They are just numbered like a pictures. It's not that. Yeah, okay, but you're supposed to make little small. In live stream, it's so big, it's not that visible. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, the eyes. Yeah, this is the zero, then you, you have one, two, three, four. They're under the pictures numbers. Okay, so this is the first one. With these pictures, I want to show you different layers of the head. You, f you see how the head is also have a layering. And uh, we start with the skin, then go the derma, then the muscles, and then the bones of, of the skull. And then inside of the bones, you will place your, your brain and all the structure of your head. Then the picture first one, please. We delay. Mm -hmm. Can you hear us? Not the next one. First. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is one. Okay, yeah, this is the first one. Okay, so on that picture, you are able to see the bones of the skull. Actually, the skull separate in two parts. This is the facial parts and neurological parts. And it is depends what kind of function have a skull. Because of that, it separates to the two parts. The facial bones, they are really up to 14th, 
and their function is just to form the phase and to keep safe all the structure which is uh, behind the bonds. The, the bonds of the face, this is the bonds of your joints. This is the lower joint, what is the mandibular. The upper joint, this is the maxilla. Then you go to the zygomatic joints, which you form it, your bottom of your eyes orbit. In the middle of the face is the bone, are the bones of your nose and the structure inside of that bones they are they are formed separation of your nose it, it's important because of the um, how much air and canalize the amount of the air we pass from environment inside of your uh, system then you have the bones which form it your eyes orbit everything of that is belongs to your face other bones which is much bigger and much wide they belongs to your neuro skull because they are forming the cavity which is the place in your brain so the next picture please is the number two it's visible your skull in inside in like you look on side yeah could you please Rick pause the picture number two Ah, okay, because for us it's just we stay in the first one, the live stream, just delay. Okay, so, the, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay, so for the second picture, you are able to see the skull on site, and there are all the bones of your narrow skull, where your brain just plays it. So the first one is forming your forehead. This is the frontal bone. Then goes to your partial bone, which is the bigger and the white one. And then you go to your occipital bone. On side, this is the temple is made uh, the side uh, formation of the skull. This is the temporal bone. It's like that. Inside of the temporal bone, is the acoustic bones which made your ears, inner ears. So on that place between the temporal bones, the zygomatic bones and the mandibula, you form the joint. What you just keep in mind this joint because it's important of explanation of Mr. Kesh after that, that that joint which is formed between I just repeat, the temporal bone, the zygomatic bone, and mandibula, they form the joint connection between these all bones. And this joint is so important of relation between your physical and emotional part of the brain. Just keep in mind this joint. Okay. Then... Just one second. The next picture is the same visible. Then could you please Rick put the number four? The number four just give you view is like uh, on the bottom of your skull. And from the bottom of your skull, you are able to see in the middle one hole from where just go through the spinal cord through all your spine. Okay, so this is the bottom of your skull. Again, just find out on the picture is written mandibular fossa. This is the hole where the lower joint just make the connection with temporally bone and the zygomatic bone. This is some kind of hole. This is for purpose made it there. 
and related with the joint what I mentioned to you in the previous picture. So that area, it's important, again I say, to make a connection between the emotional part of the brain and the physical part of the brain. Just keep in mind again. Okay, I just give you the clues about the skull. It's not that anatomically lecture. I just give you the point what is the Im important of explanation of Mr. Cash after that. Okay, then we go to the number five picture. Number five picture represented you development, embryology development of nervous system. So, we are ready or not? Because, okay. Okay, thank you. So, the embryology development of the nervous system started in the third week of embryo development in the womb. It's important that Neurosystem formed from ectoderm, ectoderm layer of three embryology layers. They are endoderm, ectoderm, mesoderm. So, in the third week of embryology development in the womb, from ectoderm starts to form the neural plate. This is the outside layer, new one above ectoderm and it's important for you that knowledge to know because ectoderm is base of your skin so above your skin may say that you form it your neural system and then you'll be get it what is the relation and what that important it is so you see on the first part of that picture 80 days <gasps> So 80 days, you have formation of the neural plate above of ectoderm. And the 20 days on this, on this neural layering, you have some kind of evagination in the middle. That evagination formed all the main channel of your brain from that evagination after weeks starts to form at all the ventriculars in your brain and the end of this evagination goes through spinal cord down through all your spine. So in the first part of the picture, you see how is formed your brain, central nervous system. And the bottom part of, your, of, your, of that picture which is mentioned on the 20 days, you see how it starts to form it your spinal cord. Okay, we go to the 22nd day. The 22nd day, you see again on your part where is placed the central nervous system, how they starts to form two ventricles. In the middle, in the green color, it's showing the evagination. Then, above, I mean, uh, between ectoderm and this neur neural layer, you see formation of the main channel. But how you see is this between neural layer and ectoderm. It's again connection between your skin and your nervous system. Okay, then we go for 24 days. We see how develop the central nervo, neural system and is so similar on the beginning to the nervous system of the fish. If you are whatever saw the nervous system of the fish, the beginning of the human nervous system in the womb is a completely similar like a formation on that on the fish. Okay, then we go to the next picture. This is number six. We are ready? Okay.
okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just if I just check, it's not slow down for me. Okay, so the this picture what they show you, and the fourth week of your embryonal development from this neo, neural layer start the formation of neural tube, and this neural tube separated to the four part. You see in pink, this is your four brain with yellow. This is your mind brain with green. This is your hind brain. And with blue, this is your spinal cord. Then, when you develop during the weeks, all these different parts, they uh, start to be developed to different kind of function. So, from the green part, origin the male encephalon that is the medulla of your brain and the metencephalon this is the pons and cerebellum cerebellum is your uh, small brain which is um, mm, take care about the equilibrium of your body on a space okay now you see the border between the yellow and the green part. Just remember, remember this border. It is so important. So the yellow part is formation of mesencephalum. This is the middle brain. And the pink, just formation of your central ne neural system. This is the D encephalon and tel encephalon. Okay, then we go to the next picture. This is the number seven. Number seven. <coughs> okay. Thank you. So, from in the picture number, number seven, you see again the view of development of the neural system. It's important here to mention that the nervous system on the beginning, can you see how the tube is little bit bending? So, the head of the tube is little bit go forward and then on the top is your yellow part and then go this is the red part this is the shape of embryo so from the beginning all the neural tube just plays it and all the body of the embryo so all the body of the embryo is represented your neural system. Okay, then the next one you see four week of the embryo. Again, is represented different part of your brain. And when you go to the last one part of that picture, you see where is the border here on that color between yellow and between blue. So how you see from the blue part origin the thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus. This is your D encephalon in your brain. So remember the border between your middle brain, what is the mesencephalon, and D encephalon. From there, originate the thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus. So now go to the lateral view and you see where is the border between the blue part. So the blue part consists also the eyes, also your lower part of your face, your neck in front, and your neck behind. 
and then comes the middle brain and here is again it's important to mention the border between the wallow part this is your mesencephalon middle brain and the blue part what is your uh, deencephalon so up to the blue part you have the gray part this is your cerebellum your brain okay then we go to the next picture this is number eight Okay, in the number eight, in chart, gives you different um, origin of different part of the brain. So, go to the point of the orange one, where is your deencephalon. Deencephalon gives you optic vesicle, epithalamus, thalamus, and hypothalamus. What is the function of that? Function is vision, and then you get the pineal gland, and then you get relay center for optic and auditory neurons, and then you get regulation of temperature, sleep, and British regulation. Okay, so the border, what we mentioned it is between, on that chart, in your orange part and green part. What is your border between deencephalon and mesencephalon, your mi middle brain. So what give you middle brain? Middle brain give you viber tract between anterior and posterior brain, optic lobes and tectum. And then go to the next picture, it's number nine. It's chart which give you all diverses of the embryology to the adult part of the brain. Just to have it and if you need to make uh, some check after the workshop just to know each part of the embryology of nervous system what part gives you in the adult brain. Okay. Then we go to the next picture, number 10. Okay, thank you. So these pictures give you like a spiral, all the evolution of the de embryo development of the brain to the adult's age. So you see how the um, shape of the embryology gives you different state, is the same state in different kind of animals. So our neural system represent in his embryo evolution all the neural systems of different kind of animals from the fish to the human and finally we get our adult shape but important in this picture just to notice that how the embryo is just bending the head part of the neural tube forward. It's so important. And remember that point. Okay, then we go to the next picture, number 11. Okay, thank you. These pictures give you the picture of embryo. 
I put these pictures to show you how the embryo, the head of the embryo, just is bending forward. And how we spoke in the previous picture, just mention the area who includes the eyes, ear, in the primary mouth and primary nose. So also include the small part from the neck, which is the on your face part, and the neck, which is your back part. Actually, the neck here in the embryo is on the line of your ears. So just mention that area, because that area in, in the development after that you see is related with your emotional brain because belongs to your D encephalon, if you remember from previous pictures, and D encephalon gives you thalamus, epithalamus, and hypothalamus. So that area who includes eyes, nose, mouth, ears, part of your neck, which is here like a part of, of your head but actually is neck because the head is bended forward and part of your neck which is the on your face side it is your part which is develop your emotional brain and it is completely different than the other parts of your neural system okay then we go to the 12th page uh, 12 picture. This is anatomically picture of brain in adult. Can you hear us? Okay, thank you. So now this is the picture of the brain of the adult. In the embryo, everything what you see in the pink color, if you remember, was like a bending forward. In adult, it's just suited normal in in horizontal line, but in embryo, it is bending forward. Just imagine little all this pink area, what is your cerebrum bending forward. And then between the yellow, what is your cerebellum, your small brain, will appear, this is the blue area, which is in this picture in the middle. But if you're bending cerebrum forward, this area will be between yellow and the pink area, cerebrum, just to imagine what we spoke from the previous picture. So this blue area, how you see, this is your deencephalon, what we spoke before, and consists the hypothalamus, thalamus, and epithalamus. And during the development, from that area, just a pair pituitary glands, this is your hypophys. Okay. So, from that picture, it's important to remember the thalamus and hypothalamus and like anatomically named corpus callosum. This is the bridge which is um, um, separate the cerebrum from the encephalon, what is in that case thalamus and hypothalamus. It's important because there goes so many neural neural tracks. This is like a highway of the neural impulse. Okay, then we go to the next picture. It's number third.
Okay, thank you. In that picture, you see your head after the neck, just cut it in the middle through the nose. Just find out in your brain the number five. It's in the middle of all the brain, number five. Even if it's colored like a brown point, number five in the middle. This is your thalamus. Okay. And, and then see the number three. This is your corpus, corpus callosum. Is this corpus callosum is a border between your cerebrum and your diencephalon. In the middle, what is the thalamus, hypothalamus, epithalamus? Then, if you make the horizontal line from the number five to reach the skull bones, you will get one point. And if you make the line between number five, then go through the F, like a letter from a corpus callosum, it's a tree. It separate to the A, B, F. So connect the number five to F, like a letter, and then connect the skull bones. And then you get one point. Just remember the point. It's nearly written on this picture number two, if you see in front of your small brain. But actually, this is the line between number five, your thalamus, letter F what, from number three, which is your corpus callosum, and then go straight to the skull bones. So remember that point. It's important for the next explanations. Okay, then we go for the next picture. It's a 14. It's give you like a 3D view of your head. Okay, thank you. So in that picture, you see in the middle of your brain, one yellow point. This is in the middle, directly in the middle. And this is yellow point inside of the white capsule. How you see, this is your corpus callosum, what we spoke before. Yellow point. This yellow point is your thalamus. How you see, he just pending in your skull, pending in the middle of your brain, like in zero point. It's so important. And yeah, in the middle, in the capsule of the corpus callosum, just make like a bridge. In the middle is the yellow subject. This is your thalamus. So just remember the name thalamus is still like in zero gravity in your head, inside, in the middle of your brain, completely in center. Okay, then we go to the next picture. Is number 15. Okay, thank you. So that pictures give you view on your skull from your back. If you remember, I just asked you to make the line between thalamus straight to the bones. Actually, on your backside of your body, on of your head, this point is between, if you see here, is just colored two brown spots. So between these two brown spots actually is um, way where that line reach the skull bones. 
And that is the place where you are able to manipulate with your emotional part of your brain, which is the, your thalamus. So that is the point outside of the brain, outside of your head, like a reward control to your thalamus. So actually thalamus, it's your emotional part of the brain. If you want to get in touch with that, outside of the head, outside of the school, on your back of your head, that part is your place where you are able to connect with your emotional part of the brain. Actually, is when um, if you touch your head, it is formed some kind of curve in your in your bones in the middle. If you touch your neck go just up in the middle and finally you reach it one curve on your bones there is that part okay the next picture this is number 16 So, number 16 gives you view of all neural tracts, highways of the neural signals from the brain and from the spinal cord to all organs to your body. How you see it is so complicated organizing direction of all the neuro neurological impulse. They have so many diversions, they have so many regulations, and not, not only in the brain, but also local in the nerves. This is really complicated organizing of the neural system because neural system is supposed to control everything on your body. And the first is your nervous system, then is going to your endocrine system. So endocrine system is like a small, uh, um, how to say, support after the, your neural system. They're so um, closely connected to each other. Also, they are from embryology, they are come from so close embryology layering it's, and it is for purpose also. Just, I show you that picture just to have in mind how complicated is organizing everything. And if you want to be connected with some organ, if you manipulate the tract from the beginning in, in pons or spinal cord or medulla, the beginning of the tracks is when you see some red spots, like a bottom, bottom, bottom on a spinal cord. If you start to manipulate the impulse from that part, you see how the impulse spreads through all the highways of the nervous system to the different organs. So for only one root point, you are able to, um, to control and to change the function of the different internal organs of the different parts of your body. Only for one point in your spinal cord, in your medulla, or in your cerebrum. The last part, which one? This is about the spine. That, so Mr. Keshe asked me to repeat about the point. So the tracks, the tracks in anatomy means the highway of the neural signals. They are formed from the cerebrum, go through all the 
pons, medulla, and then go to the spinal cords, and then reach different kind of level of spinal cords depending what kind of signal they carry on. The red spot, what you see in your spinal cord and pons, this is the where the track is stopped, or this is the more sensitive part of this track of the highway of some neurological signal. The neurological signal um, care, care the information for all the nucleus from your cerebrum. So if you want to manipulate some internal organ, some nucleo in your cerebrum, or some part of your body, you are able just to connect with these red spots. This is the control point for your neurological system. It is important if you want to make some device to control the functions on your body. That's why I just show you this, that picture, just to see if you connect with the red spot where the signal go on. If you're following the colors, you are able to see which one organ you reach. If you put the device to the first point red or the second or the third or the fourth or whatever. Just depends on what you want to do. In that way, it's so easy to reach each cell all over the body. Because the signal just goes from the spinal cord or from the point, pons through all the body, but finally it reach each cells. Depends of function of these cells. Okay, then the next picture is the seventeenth. Okay, thank you. This picture gives you view of 12 nerves where they come from your brain. And you see the main organs or part of the body where the signals goes. So for the purpose of our explanation, it's important to see trigeminal nerve it is number five, and the number seven, which is the facial nerve. They are important of explanation after that of Mr. Cash. So you have a map, just find the number five and the number seven. Okay. Because there are two types of nerves come through your face directly and they pass the area of the joint what I mentioned you on the beginning formed from mandibula, from uh, zygomatic bone and from temporal bone, the joint of mandibula. This is your main joint between upper and lower joint. These two nerves, five and seven, just pass this area. So, also this area, if you remember, belongs to your emotional part of your brain. It means if you applicate something on that part, and if you want to reach the brain, you are able to reach the brain from that part through these two nerves, trigeminum number five and facialis number seven. So that is the logic. Because these joints belong to the emotional part of the brain, if you remember how I explained it to you from embryology, how the head of the embryo just is bending forward, and because of that, how all these parts form the emotional part of the brain. And these two nerves 
just pass this area and because of that you are able to transform the signal from that area to the brain back to, through these two nerves number five trigeminus and number seven facialis okay next picture number eight is the same like previous just i give it you to to have more view and to able to understand easily what we what we speak about i will be not explain because it is the same just to have it i also post on the live stream so you are able to download it just to have like a charts in front of you when you think of some device or something Okay, the next one is 19. It's again the chart of the 12 neural, 12 brain nerves, like a map, just to see. And in in the 19 pictures, is give it to you how the five nerves reach different point of the skull. So. This different point is your way to reach back the brain from the skull to transmit the signal to the brain. That's why I just give it to you that picture. Number five, trigeminus. Just see different point of your skull is like temporary part, zygomatic part, mandibular part near the joint. This is the point where you are able to apply some device and then through this nerve to reach back the brain. Okay, the next picture is number 20. Yeah, okay, thank you. I give you this picture just to see this is anatomically pictures, this, just to see how they are really looks like these nerves. So in front of you, this is your cerebrum, this is your medulla, your pons, your cerebellum, uh, sp spinal cord. Then you see how teeny, teeny they are and how they spread to so small branches. And then they goes through the body. Just to have a real view what they looks like. Okay, then the second first. So the last one is, is the picture of nervous trigeminus, the five one nerve, and it give you how it goes from the bones through the bones on your face, and which one the points reach to the skull. So again, this is the points which you are able to transform the signal back to your brain. And we will keep it these pictures through the exp all the explanation of Mr. Kish because you will be need just to imagine what he will be speak about. Okay, from anatomically view, it is from my side. If you have some questions about the anatomy and physiology, you are able to ask me and then Mr. Kesh will be followed with his explanation. 
Uh, the pineal gland, this is your hypophys. Have the question from the live stream. The function of the hypophys is the regulation of all the other endocrine glands in your body. So the in the endocrinology system, the first regulation starts from your hypothalamus, then the signals goes for to your hypophys. The hypophys spread to the two parts, anterior and posterior part, with, with different functions. But more, more function of regulation comes from your anterior part, and hypophys regulate the function of your thyroid, of your kidney glands, of your pancreas, of your uh, genitalia, endocrine glands, in the way of back back up connection is mean is the hormone if of the glands in your body is in the lower level give the You know, it's breaking up on Skype. You seem to be having some trouble with the uh, sound on Skype. Seems to be disappearing. Um, let's see if we can fix that. Maybe internet again. Because uh, I can hear you perfect. I can hear you perfect. So. They just drop off, seems like. Um, uh, can you hear me? Yes, okay. What happened? I think as we discussed it before, um, Rick, I think it's the same process. We're getting hacked again like last week. So, if we have a problem, uh, we have a continuous, we, we go on the second line. I pass the headphone to Daniel. Okay, I will repeat Thank about you. the function of hypophyse because I think you didn't hear that or or you hear. Um, you 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 Rick, you probably you should that? repeat that, uh, Elia, just so we make sure we got it. Okay, so the regulation started for hypothalamus. Then comes hypophys, and then all the other endocrine glands. The main regulation is from hypothalamus. Hypothalamus regulates the hypophyse, and hypophyse regulates other endocrine glands. They have... Rick, could you please switch off your video? Okay. And... The endocrine glands of your body is your thyroid glands, your thymus, your kidney glands, pancreas, and then the glands which belong to your genital area. And the connection between the peripheral endocrine glands and hypophyse is the connection of the mm, back up connection is mean if the hormones in your peripheral glands go less in the blood. So hypophys directly is informed that she has to increase the regulation hormone. She increases the regulation hormone and then the glands starts to produce more hormones of itself. 
if something happened with hypophys and regulation just disappear from her side, hypothalamus starts to produce more the regulation hormones from itself, then the hypophys starts to increase her hormones and then the peripheral glands. Yeah, this is the function of hypophys. So the first is hypothalamus, then hypophys, and then the all other peripheral endocrinal glands. Which one of these regulate temperature directly? Directly regulate thalamus. Also for the temperature, you have a nucleus, which they are compare the temperature of the body and the environment, the signal format in that nucleus, then inform the thalamus, and then they make the temperature of the body. I just read the question in the live stream. If someone else have the questions. Can you hear us? Uh, yes, we can hear you, uh, Elia. Okay. Some other questions? I guess your explanations must have been good because nobody has any questions. <laughs> uh, I guess. I hope so. I just Wait a minute. To be Wait a useful minute. For you, you know, it's just. I hear lead mill coming through here. Yeah. I, I asked for a thalamus. Thalamus mm -hmm. <laughs> can regulate the, the recycled plasma. What is the meaning of recycled plasma? Danielle Murphy. Just. Could you please write more more precisely the questions because I not get the idea. Thalamus then regulate recycled plasma. We talk about it. Okay, Mr. Cage said he will be answered. Curvel vries. What about the pain? What about the pain? What do you mean? Where do we feel it? Pain, but pain have so many causes. Oh, where do we feel it in the brain? In the brain, yeah. in emotional part, no, to get that's a physical. Where do we feel the pain physically in our body, in the brain? If, if I hurt you, if I pinch you, yeah, where do you feel it. You don't feel it in your emotion. You feel it in your brain. Which part of the brain is responsible for pain? They have different kind of nucleus. That's what is asking. Okay, different kind of nucleus you have in cerebrum for that is depending what kind of pain you have and from what. Headache is like a migraine and the classification of migraine is like one book in, and you may cause from the uh, restriction of your artery or dislocation of your spine of if the hormone is, is, is not uh, in the proper level also because of some psychology state. So the headache is like a symptom. It's so complicated to ask for like this. You have to have, uh, you have to find the root of headache and then it's able to ask for. Because really classification of the migraine is huge because of different kind of cause. Headache is just result. It's not the cause. What creates fever? It depends what, uh, okay, uh, what creates fever? Fever is, is completely, uh, how to say, really again is the result because if you have a cancer, for example, that cancer after the metabolism in the cells, out of the cells like uh, side products, goes some kind of molecules and that kind of molecules irritate the center of the temperature. If you have infection, for example, and then the bone marrow 
produce the lymphocyte. When the lymphocyte goes to the bacteria, virus, whatever, they eat at them. And from that eating, and the, again started the assimilation of process in cells, they produce again the side molecules where they, which cause the temperature because of this assimilation of process of lymphocyte of the bacteria, virus, some other microbe, whatever. So the temperature is again the symptom, is not a cause, regarding of the cause. Hypothermia is the, you mean uh, hypothermia, induced hypothermia or from the body, just body go to hypothermia itself. Is the question from live stream from um, um, Elia, we only have about a half hour left yeah. in the show, so maybe we should uh, segue into um, how Mr. Kesh okay, would like so to interpret it, some of I these questions. To Mr. Kesh. Okay, and thank you for attention. If you have some other question, you know the email, just write me in the healthkiev at gmail.com, so I, will, I do my best to answer to everyone. Thank you. I will give you to the Mr. Kesh. Thank you very much, Elia. That was excellent. Hello, good afternoon or good morning uh, or good evening. Um, thank you very much, Elia. Um, Elia has explained uh, in a medical term what um, was to be disclosed new. Uh, we went through the things uh, yesterday and it's perfectly explained. Some of the things which uh, Elia has explained is unknown in the world of medicine and in, the, in uh, biology. And one of the points which is very important from the bone structure is that the borderline between the emotional part of the body and the physical part of the body is the jaw of the man. Anything above the upper jaw, part of the skull, is built, developed over billions of years to protect the emotional part, which this is um, what is the most important part of the whole creation. So what happens? the emotional part, which she showed you in number five, is the essence of the whole being of existence of the man. So, whatever you do, whatever you eat, you run, you live, you fight to live, is to keep this section in a working condition. The rest of all the parts of the brain are literally built over time to service and to keep this operation in the part in section 5 intact. As Elia explained to you, the emotional part is a connection between the soul of the man and the man the physical man. What you saw as section 3A, in the diagram, is the separation between the emotional part and the physical part, which is the rest of the brain. So, in fact, what the body has done over millions of years, has kept the control of the emotional part in the hand of the Section 5. Because then it makes sure that it exists. The rest of the bone structure in the head, in the upper neck, is set to protect this point. If you look at it, it sits right in the center. It is because the first 
the protection is built for itself, the more chances it has to survive, doesn't matter what happened to the rest of the body. So, your jaw is, belongs to your physical part, because it moves to chew, it moves to open up a hole, that food can go to nourish the physical part, the stomach, to, to be able to support the physical part of the brain, which is the outer part. Anything above your upper jaw, is what literally the emotional part needs to operate and respond to. The nose, the position of the eyes and the ear, through the sound, through the smell, through the sight, the body keeps the emotional part always informed of the environment of what's happening around it, and how it has to protect to stay alive. Then, when you see the tongue, the tongue is the separation between the physical and emotional. That's why the senses on your tongue are connected to the senses in your nose. The smell. Which sits just above your, just between the two eyes. So, if you put the rest of the, the structure of the body, all the bones and everything else below aside, the control room sits in this part, in the skull, in the upper skull. The same thing is what we call the pituitary gland. This is again part of the emotional part. If, if you look at it, it is connected directly next to it. Because the brain even has given autonomy to the physical part of the brain to do the rest of the thing for itself. But just in case, if something goes wrong, it still needs connection and control, because it's part of the slavery which is exchanged. The physical part is the leech. If you look at it, it's actually a leech, it's sitting on top of the emotional part. So, as um, Elia explained, this gland, is directly connected to the rest of the glands, as I've said in the previous talks. The glands are substations, subsidiaries of the brain. And now, uh, you see it in the picture, you understand exactly how the body has done. The brain, the emotional part, has protected itself in a case, in a spherical case, which is shape of the mm, control room is very much like the reactors. It penetrates from the center to the outer boundaries, which is your brain. And the further you go in the brain, the most remote part of the physical pod body receives the information. If you look at the position of number five, which is the emotional part, the first pictures were shown, is directly connected to the eye's retina. The first split comes with retina, which means I want to keep an eye on everything, I want to be aware of what's going on around me. Then, from the above, the separation between the emotional and the physical, the further out you go, there is less need for existence. If it's not there, I can still exist. Look above where it sits, the two half of the brain, the, the upper, immediately above the separation line, you, is a control of your upper arms and upper legs. As you go to the boundary outside, to the near the skull, you have the control to the lower arms and lower legs. And as you go further down sideways, you have the controls for the fingers. So, the brain, in the emotional part, has decided what the physical part is going to go and look. And so, it has spread its um, position and the shape of the bone structure to allow what it needs to do. So, your emotional part dictates the shape, the size, the the um, cavities of your 
physical bone of the brain. And to that extent, that goes back to what we talked last time. Then it decides how it's going to feed itself, how it's going to look after itself. And that is why, for example, when you get excited emotionally, your breathing goes up and down. You breathe harder, you breathe slower, because your breathing, your eyes and your side is, is part of the control system of the emotional part, which is the soul of the man connected to. So, it is very easy to see how the rest can be and will be literally non-usable in deep space. This is, as we always say, Keshe Foundation's space technology, and we re what we do is to understand how we can not necessarily transport the man into a space as totality. But if we can, in the time, a coming time it will be done, you can take this part of the brain, which is exactly your targets with you, and you'll find a new environment anywhere in a space, and you can keep it energized and alive that it can function. The man will find a new environment to reproduce the shape of the physical part to fit that environment. So when the time comes, man in deep space finds new locations, like you go from, let's say, from India to China, you start eating the food and the culture and the customs of Chinese, or you go to South America, the same. When you can take this part of the brain of the man into deep space, where you don't need to carry the whole physicality, then man will adapt his physicality to the environment which is allowed to grow. Necessarily in the new position, you don't need such a big skull because the energy received is totally different. So the brain will be different. The bone structure will be different if you are in a liquid state, but it gives you the same kind of field. You don't need arms and legs. You might not need the fins the way we are used to it. We use the proportional in gravity and you need a smaller body. Then the pinnacle with the what do you call it, Thomas will decide what the physicality will look like in that position. This is goes back to what I said in some of the lectures before. The one who talk about the no house boat are the people who came with the no house boat, but they did not come in physicality of the man. This is the separation. This is where, where the body, the skull, is the most important part of the whole structure. So, what does this mean? It means, even if you separate the rest of the body, without mm, allowing the, what it needs as the source of its own protection, the blood, that you can supply the same kind of energy, as I explained, that energy, no oxygen never crosses the lung. And then, you will see, you have all the necessary conversion systems in the bones of the skull, to support life and the existence of the, um, this point, the emotional part. But, at the same time, <laughs> We discussed this before in other workshops, regarding the transfer. If you look at the neural systems, which uh, Elia has shown, you see a connection between the bone in the jaw, and the bone which comes from the face, through the brain, through the emotional part. This point, this nerve system, is one of the most important nerve systems, that if the world of medicine understands the working of it, there should be no man paralyzed, and no man should be in coma. You can transfer. We, we done this, this is not theoretical, it's been done, it's been shown, it's been recorded. But, 
We yes, do not uh, use it present in the cash flow. Sorry, sorry Mr. Cash, we're losing the because audio. Because of the specific reason in developing. We're losing the audio. Uh, we missed can you hear me now? Um, can yeah, you hear can, me? Yes, yes, I can hear you now, but the audio was cutting out there for a bit. Uh, it seemed like there was a bandwidth yes. problem or Somebody something. Somebody is loading something on. Ah, uh, yes. That's I can see on. it somewhat. We are getting hacked again, like last time. We are not loading anything. It depends who's loading what. Is anybody loading? Is don't you have two people on the same <clears throat> same line there, perhaps? <clears throat> can you hear me? We can, yes, we can hear yes, you now. Yes, somebody is loading. Somebody is loading to keep the lines busy. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, is it? We'll, we'll try can to we, carry on. Can we? Can we do something? Can everybody move out of the Skype? Keep two lines on the Skype, that we cannot be hacked, and everybody goes to the live stream or go to meetings. We are getting hacked. I can see it on the system. It's getting loaded. Yeah, I was thinking uh, it might be at your end <clears throat> with the other line that's being used, perhaps the other uh, computer. Uh, but maybe we could. Um, we don't have go to meeting tonight uh, right now, so today. Uh huh. Okay, so no problem. Well, Are we still getting cut off in pieces? Um, let's carry on I, and try it. It comes yeah. and goes. Sometimes I it's clear. See, yeah, yeah. I can see it. We are getting hacked. I see the circles. They are working to load up. They are loading the lineup. They're sitting on the server. I can see it through Elias system that it is getting it's getting loaded. Nobody's loaded any pictures on. We're getting loaded. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you clearly now. So, well, let's. Okay, so, uh, but if you get off, John, is your line open? We 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 go on the John's line. We do it that way. Let them stay busy with it. Okay, just. Um, if you want to keep the cash foundation line off, can you hear me? No, not yet. Hello? It uh, doesn't Hello? sound. Can you hear me now? It's starting to get more clear. Okay, we changed my I could see Okay. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Um, just wait a second, please, if you can hear us. No, it's, it's on. It sounds good there now. It's starting to come through. Rick, do you hear us now? Uh, yeah. Can you try it again, please? Rick, can you hear me? It's very weak, but yes. I can turn it up on my audio if I need to. Now it's now. <clears throat> excuse me. Now it's not coming through good. I can barely hear you. Hello. Hello. Now I can hear you clearly, yes. There's a headset. There's a headset. That's it, that's it. You can hear the headset. This is what you speak. You yeah. have to hear the headset. Is used. Hello. Yes, that's can very clear. Us? Really good, yes. It's the maximum. Just see if he's can be heard. Yeah. 
they hear us, but we don't hear them. Okay, put one yours on, please. Put your speaker on. You see, this speaker is volume too short. Hello, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Yes, okay, we are sorted now. We are back. We had to switch. I could see we are getting hacked like last week. They tried to load it up to stop. Can I have the pen, please? The pen just... Okay, can we go ahead? Yes, please, go ahead. Well, what's happening? We are hearing you again. Here we are. Can you hear me now? Yes, it sounds clear, Mr. Cash. Hello? Yeah, where are we now? It's good, except there is a bit of an echo I there. Was, uh, hold voice. on, hold on. What's happening now? Hold on. Let's stop there. No. Okay, we are back on. Okay. Are you good to go? We are good to go. We had to do some change. We're getting used to this now. <laughs> very good. So not, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for those who try to hack. <laughs> we have we got another solution if you want to know. You try it, I'll show you. Be careful, you have to buy a new computer <laughs> and a new server. We have already new. <laughs> we already have a new because she's sitting next to us. She had to buy one. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we buy one. We, 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 Elia had to buy a new one. There is no problem. Okay, so okay. we go on to the position of. Uh, yeah, uh, we go, where, from where didn't you hear us? Um, we were, you were discussing the, um, uh, the parts of the brain with the uh, emotional parts in the center, and we were looking at that uh, image that's on the live stream, with the, uh, um, <clears throat> you were discussing the upper part of the brain, and Did you understand uh, the separation between the jaw, the physical part, and the, uh, And there goes the sound. The sound just went again. Hello, Spaceship Institute. Can't, can't hear you there, Mr. Kesh. Yeah. Can you hear us? I can hear you now, but it cut out okay. there. I couldn't hear at all. Okay, we, we it says here somebody says that. Um, no connection of the body control. Okay. Okay, we try to we we try to retract back. Can you hear me clearly now? Yes. Okay, so what we're, I'm going to go back and try to wherever we stopped as far as I can remember, and then you you can add. Um, what happened? I explained that there is a connection. The connection of uh, in the the jaw is the connection between uh, of the physical part of the body, and it has no uh, connection with the emotional part of the body, which is the upper um, part of the head or upper jaw. If the physicians understand this, and as I said, we have recording of this, we have videoed it, you can change paralysis of the, any part of the body, as long as there is no nerve cut, especially in cases like coma, you can transfer the working part of the brain, of the physical part of the brain, to the nerves in the up in the lower jaw. Once you establish the nerve system, because it's controlled through the, the connection with the physical part of the body, then you find the position for it back in the physical part of the brain. Once you establish the working of this, I explained to you how about this means. In the common case, I've explained this before. Once we brought the girl out of the coma, we realized that she's gone paralyzed on the left-hand side of the body. We transferred the working of the uh, left-hand side and the right-hand side to the two sides of the jaw, to the nerves on the, on the jaw. Once we thought the left part, 
which is the right side of the jaw, that he has to copy what is happening on the right side of the jaw, which is the left side of the right side of the body. Then, once it was learned, we transferred the whole thing back to the physical part of the body, and the person comes out of the paralysis. This is like when you have a, a neuroshocks. But if you have a cut off the nerves, it's totally different principle, different thing. And this happens, the, one of the problems is when people go in the wheelchair, the whole system shuts down at the point that you cannot interact with it to, do, to, to re, reconnect in a way, even though the information goes through the spinal cord. So, the position and the structure of the skull is literally a reactor, and if you look at the, again, not a call, the number five, as Elia showed it, um, it's exactly placed from birth in the condition, in the place where emotional part can function and at the same time the connection between the emotional part, the ears, the eyes and the, what you need to know about the condition of the survival and guaranteeing the survival of the uh, section 5 is done by the brain itself through the facilities which is made for itself. Ears to be aware of what is around, that it cannot endanger its existence, holds directly to the nearest part of it, Eyes, the holes that the light, the information in the digital form for it can be absorbed, but it can protect survive itself. Nose and the sense of smell to be able to understand what is going on which is not physically dimensionally detectable, which is no, the, the smell. A smell is three-dimensional gas. breathe in, is a source of energy. Yeah, okay. Where did you, what was the last thing you heard? Uh, <clears throat> you were discussing about the nose and uh, yeah. uh, smell, and then just the last sentence that you said was, uh, okay. so we started to break smell. up and we it, and uh, about the uh, three-dimensional gas uh, aspect. Yeah. Okay. So what the what the, the gas um, smell is a three-dimensional crystal structure of the gas. That's why it spreads and it covers the environment exactly like gas. It covers the environment is given. That's why you can smell the, anything when you go in this in, in the room. So, the smell is important to the life, the survival of the uh, emotional part of the brain. Because if you're in a fire, you cannot smell it, and your back is to it, the life, the survival of the, the thomas is finished, is, uh, you die. You, because you cannot, take, you cannot smell what is the condition. The reason that at the same time the tongue is connected to the um, sense of the smell, is because what you taste guarantees should be, even though it's to do with physical part, if you eat a poison, you don't taste it, you don't taste the wrong food, then it can endanger the, the survival of the um, Thomas. So it has connected part of the taste to the, to the smell, 
again as a line of assurity guarantee that it stays alive itself. In fact, if you look at the rest of the skeleton, the whole structure on the top can exist without it. We see ribs being replaced with um, titanium, we see bones in different parts of the body being replaced with everything else. But, because they have no purpose for the structure, except protecting what guarantees the life. In so many ways, in so many ways, most of the capacity of the lung, which guarantees the energy for through the red blood cells for the survival of the thomas, can be done by the bone structure in the head, on the upper end part of the body itself. It does not need to do the conversion. As I always say in all the talks, what you eat is 20% of the total energy the body needs. 80% is absorbed from the environment. And the shape and the structure of the brain, in especially in man, is being fixed in a way that centralizes all the energies which come from any direction right to the position where Thomas is. He has guaranteed his survival without the existence of the rest of the arms and the legs, if it needs to be. That's why in some tumors, some brain cancers, they can take the whole top of the brain out, but the person is still alive and can function and judge have feelings, have emotions, even though they cannot move their physical body. So, if you look at the whole structure, the bone structure of the skull, it's very much, it's exactly, depending on its tips and holes, as somebody said, they could make a nuclear, uh, what do you call it, um, gravitational reactor from a coconut, it's a coconut. And the center of it, is Thomas. So all the fields, it's like the way in the uh, in your reactors, you put in a nano-coated pin in the middle to centralize all the fields of your gases that it cannot go anywhere. This is your Thomas. This is the essence of the creation, the rest is protection. The way your head is structured, the way your bone structure of your face, or your uh, upper part of your head is, dictates how much energy, in which direction, is absorbed by which part of talus. Which then, that dictates your behavior, in respect to positioning your souls, in respect to your physicality. So, you will see people with a certain features of the brain, they have the same characteristics, because the same kind of radiation is absorbed from the environment, which is focused to the center. It is very much like uh, the lenses you take and you put it in the direction of the sun, and you can focus it to burn the paper. But the brain does the whole operation through the skull itself. If this part absorb energy itself, it would have solved out the problem with the calcium, then it would have, man would have never had legs and arms, but it has, it's in the process of development, it has learned how to do it, and that's why we need the arms and legs to move around, to guarantee the survival of the physical part, by eating. Because the emotional part receives and has programmed itself in an easier way, to receive his own energy for his survival through the uh, skull bone. So, it comes to a point that you have a reactor, it has a central core, it absorbs energy and it releases energy, and as a proton has an electron for its balance, the balance 
for the emotional part, which is the existence in the matter form, is the soul of the man. Which stays outside the boundary of the physical life. That's why you can destroy the physical life, but the uh, soul stays alive, the existence. Oh, can you hear us? Yes, it's fine, it's not us. So, now we understand the whole structure of the creation of the bone structure in the past three sessions we had, and the reason for it. All the bone structures below the neck is for the physicality. Somewhere in the process of the evolution man, There goes the sound again. Something must have uh, come in there. There's some communications or something. I think there might be too many people uh, trying to communicate at the Spaceship Institute, perhaps. Hello? Hello? You okay. can hear us. Yeah, it's coming yeah. back now. There is, a, there is a huge, huge question mark. Now that we have developed new technologies, understanding the process of the creation, there is a huge question mark that, did we ever come out of the water? The way it's been explained up to now in evolution. The whole structure is brings a lot of things into question. How, in what process, we have actually evolved to protect this emotional part, and how much to protect it has led us to find new ways of uh, finding food and air. In the future programs, when we do more health, uh, and we understand more, as now that, so in the video of the um, CO2 kit, we have shown the parallel with, uh, between the CO2 kit and the leaf of the plant. We will explain more and more in detail that, you don't breathe, as we have said before, one type of oxygen. You breathe cocktail of the oxygens, of different energy, magnetic, gravitational level. And all this, the composition is, in fact, not for the emotional part, but for the physical part. So, in totality, the whole bone structure is for the physical part, not for the emotional part. And so, what happens when you have the emotional part, the, the instant that your emotional part is created, even in the pictures which Elia showed, you see that the protection side, the operational control system of the physical part is spread on the top, and the emotional part, the thalamus goes right in the center to protect itself in all conditions. There is a lot of questions in, in respect to um, physicality handicaps due to the lack of oxygen and the position of the emotional part of the body, of the being. All these can be rectified. Can you hear me now? Hello? There, it's starting to come back again. Okay. okay. We are getting hacked heavily. We are on different lines. They are trying very best to hack us. Um, it's no problem. So, as I said, if you have people like with, um, when they are born with a lack of oxygen, 
you'll find out emotionally they are perfect. If there is any imperfection in the emotional part, the physical part dies. If there is anything wrong with the emotional part of the brain, do not forget that the emotional part of the brain, in parts, in connections with the physical part, carries part of the calcium which comes through the bone structure of the uh, skull itself. And at the same time, if you look at where the emotional part, the thalamus sits, and you just go straight up into the physical part of the brain, when the emotions cannot be handled, the, the amount of uh, energy received for for not solving, but in a way digesting, in a way to absorb the energies which are emotional part, when these are released in one go, this is when you get a brain hemorrhage, because the energy is like a volcanic eruption from the emotional part erupts, and as it erupts it goes upwards, it damages the upper arm, the upper leg, the arms, the lower arms and the fingers, and that's why you see paralysis with all the strokes, brain strokes, brain hemorrhage. Is the energy in the emotional part is so vast, it's so huge that when it's released as a, in one go, can literally destroy, not to destroy, dissolve or interconnect the plasmas of the rest of the plasmas within the brain structure and the physical part, and you get all these kind of things with the stroke. That's why when you have a stroke case, you always try to solve the emotion, and then you find out through it, the physical part will solve in a matter of time. Sound is bad, we don't know better now. So, the whole structure goes back to one thing. You have a reactor, you call the skull, and this reactor has a center point, which all the energies from it, according to what the soul decides, in conjunction with the emotional part, dictates the structure of the, the skull. Then you create the man around it in the long term, as the man grows and matures. The shortness, the height, the shape of the face, the shape of the fingers, the shape of the arm, the shape of the bone, the toes, all decided by the emotional part, in respect to position of the soul in its living part. When we run reactors, we show you this in physicality, how reactors interact. You find happy reactors, you find angry reactors. I've said that before, we've seen its operation. So, in, in fact, once the uh, Thomas is, the first seed of Thomas is set, it creates its own sphere and the energy point, and this energy point has to connect with what is parallel for existence, which is what we call the soul of the man. And the operation, the position that soul is going to have in the environment of where it is, as, as, as its own, uh, what I call, universe of the souls, then dictates the shape of the man. Because the destiny is set in interaction, as much as I always said, you pray for the soul, through the soul you affect the, the, the physicality of the man, the same is done by other souls to one soul that been received by the Thomas dictates what physicality we are going to have. In so many ways, it's the RNA and the DNA. The soul is the RNA part of the structure of the man, and the Thomas is the DNA. The rest of the physicality is how this thing can exist, that the other one can be connected to. So, at the, that point, in that way, then the brain decides how to structure, or the Thomas decides how to structure the physicality of the structure of the brain, in the skull, that receives the energies that it needs to operate for what has been agreed, or what has been set as an energy level in the plasma, in the cell. So, that's why, you, with a facial, 
once you see a man or a person, you can say the condition of the mind of the man. The way he shakes hand, the way he has up, he stands up on his bone structure. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, can you hear us? Hello? Good now. This is sounds good now. So, now you understand. What happens, we have, we are recording this separately here all the time. We can send you the recording of it, because the recording can stay. We have, a, we have a microphone recording. We record everything we say. In the future, if there is any problem with the sounds, we always, from the first uh, talks all the time, even when we started the teaching here, uh, uh, we have made the audio recording of all, all the talks. So, uh, if you have a problem ever with the audio, we can, uh, you can ask Marco, Marco usually downloads them into a backup disk, and we, we make two or three copies of it in different banks, that's, uh, if anything happens, we hold them. You can just uh, override it or whatever. Um, so, this is, this, this is what I was explaining before you told me you're cut off, that, uh, the, the structure of the operation of the soul, besides the structure operation of the Thomas, once the Thomas is, is created in its position, and then the physicality comes into operation. And then, it's decided how, this is what you call in, 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 in the language, we call it as a destiny. The destiny of the man, is set by the souls which have no need, but are aware of what is being set for the body of the man. And then, you go accordingly, the physicality is created to fit that. But you need new energies, new plasmatic gravitational magnetic fields, to create the new dimensions for that. That's why you have a male and a female. Because male comes with his DNA, on the physical side, and RNA on the emotional side, memory bank, the same, the two, when you mix the two sounds together, you get a new sound. So, you get a new DNA structure, plus whatever it's been recorded on the RNA. And then that RNA is the same position as the physicality becomes the DNA, and the soul of the man becomes the RNA for the recorder collective what it needs. But, the soul does not need physicality to exist, because it's detached from physicality, but it's connected to it, it's like when you have two magnets. You can do whatever you like with one magnet. The other one will still exist, and you still have a line of connection. But if you turn one, the other one can turn two. So, in so many ways, the structure, the bone structure of the man in totality, is 100%, without the shadow of a doubt, is decided by Thomas. And the rest, if you have accidents, or you get a uh, physical mishaps in the operation of the birth, or whatever, deficiencies, or whatever, those are the physical side, which you have to find out how you can reach it, to change it. This is what I explained a lot of time. This is what it looks like, uh, uh, the sound is we are getting cut off, we are getting heavily, have you got the line? Sound okay. So, uh, we try to find another operation to cover the sound in the coming days, this, there's no problem. Uh, so, now we understand why and how, in so many ways, each one of us is different, and even why, from different parts of the planet, we come up with different features, why all the Chinese look the same, and all the Europeans look the same. In time, when we go to space, we'll have the same problem. People from Earth will have ten fingers and ten toes, and people from other positions, they don't need toes and feet, but they roll like a ball. But they still can talk, they can communicate, not talking, but communicate, and show their feelings. So, physicality of the man, 
is more or less even the whole bone structure. The bone structure is the main frame. Once you make the frame, then you have to move it. Then the muscles are made to fit how to move this bone structure to be able to be in a position to absorb energy through food or whatever that the physicality can exist. If you look in center of, in, in the whole structure of the brain, Thomas hardly has any blood vessels coming to it. Most of the blood vessels sitting on the outer boundary of the, the structure of the physical part of the brain. Because it receives its energy to exist, to change, to do, and its structure is more or less, more or less with a few differences, is homogeneous. This is very much like the Gans, which we shown on the table here. So, through the holes which is made to hear the sound of his environment, through the eyes which is made to see, at least to see what's going, it doesn't fall down the ditch. At the same time, through the nose to be able to smell what the environment is, that it can save itself. Soul has made that part totally under his own control, the, the Talmus. And the rest of the physicality part, the physical part, your sounds, your whatever you hear, and wherever is the sound is heard or whatever, this is just for the physicality that it can be repaired if it is need be. Any questions? Thank you for all that, uh, Mr. Kesh. That was enlightening. I think uh, Sandor is... Uh, might have a question here. He's, he's writing in the chat. <laughs> he says, uh, what is the operation Let of the cerebellum? Nothing to do with the operation of the bone structure and the thalamus. It's auxiliary. All the other parts within the brain are all auxiliaries, they have been put in there to do certain jobs. I think that was explained by um, Elia. When you have, um, when you have all these muscles, when you have all these tissues, when you have all the organs, and all of them have physical conditions to be protected, to, to be changed, to be reprocessed, to have a lifespan. You need a huge brain, huge computer. And that's where it comes into operation. That's got nothing, this is all to do, all has to do with physical part of the body. This physical part needs temperature control, it needs uh, uh, sensation to feel, how it can protect itself. Don't forget, there is the... <coughs> the skin of the man is just... Uh, is it as it regenerates itself and the way it does as a nano layer, all needs controlling continuously and this is all done by the server. Everything you see which is changeable, the recycling process is controlled by this section. That's why it's so big. Because the skin has to be always the same color, the same thickness, the same position, distance from the bone, and all that for every single cell on the body. It's not random. Nothing is random, everything is controlled. And you need such a huge computer to control such a huge organization. Every drop of liquid in your body, every drop of, um, every single cell of your stomach, your heart, your, uh, all the organs, they just don't get created. It's just because they happen to be there. They are controlled, they are replaced, they are repaired, and this is, this is all done by that part of the brain. That's got to do with the physical part, it's got nothing to do with the emotional part. Uh, Mr. Kesh, I had a question regarding the uh, uh, 
I had a question regarding the thymus and the environment specifically around the thymus mm. gland. Thalamus. Thalamus. Yeah. Um, What's with the classification? What the calcification. calcification. Uh, yeah. That thing, it just happened for a certain reasons. Because you have very little amount of it. In uh, thalamus. Ah, what is ah? Okay. Yeah, the the question is from Jack H. What is the calcification of thalamus? Okay, very easy. You have a brain. You have a bone structure, which is a which is exactly uh, like the structure of the one we talked about the um, uh, fema in the other bone uh, structures. As the material comes in, for as it as the bone structure is um, used from the brain, from the liquid, this carries with itself its own immune system and is connected to the calcium of the brain or calcium of the skull. And this, as it goes through the body, it reaches the the thalamus too. There is something very interesting. You got to. The, the brain, this is what I've taught somewhere to some med medical people a few months ago. The structure of the brain starts from the bone structure in. So, the, the cell which is on the outer boundary does, if you take your MRI, you understand exactly, you see the softness, it looks like a soft part of the top of the brain, and the outer boundaries of the brain, when you do a MRI, you see it. That, that part, that cell, which is, let's say, created on the direction of the, uh, let's say, your upper arm, it goes in through to become part of the thalamus. So, as it's passing, let's say, the upper arm section of the um, physical part, it makes connections and links with that part, that when it becomes part of the thalamus, the energy, the gravitational field, magnetic field which creates, matches to the environment which has gone through. So, this becomes the connection between what the emotional part wants to the part which physically exists. That, let's say, emotionally you want to uh, cuddle your child. To cuddle the child, you need to raise your arm, or to stick your hands out. The information comes from the, as the cell moves from the outer, outer boundary of the, uh, the brain, that cell, that part of the physicality of the brain, which has gone through the, uh, the arm section of your body, when it reaches thalamus, becomes part of it, because then it's homogeneous. It's, it's very much like a bone marrow, it carries everything becomes one. That becomes the link between your emotional part and your upper arm. So, then it's easy, it's matching. It's like you make a magnet for wood, you make magnet for uh, plastic. Because it's the same length. So, as the cells come through the outer section of the brain into the center of the brain, to become part of thalamus, they pass different part of the physicality part of the brain. And then when they reach the thalamus to become part of itself, to become one, then they have a connection line with where they passed. And that's how the connection is made. You want an arm to be stretched out, it stretches out. You want to cry, you cry, because the nerve system goes through. You got to see why the, the inner ears are placed so much in the inside of the brain where they are. Everything has a reason in a conjunction in what the emotional part can do. So, uh, in that process, as we said in the last talk, as the uh, lymph go through the bone structure, and as they become part of the immune system, they all carry calcium, because they go through the calcium. 
and it's the same thing with the brain struck with a with a with a, a skull of the man. The outer as the skull, the produces materials to keep the shape of the skull, to keep the bones of the skull. These calciums with these cells which have become part of the body gradually sink in and become part of it because then they protect it from what it is and they become a connection between the physicality and the and the emotional part. And then that's where you find it's it's the same process, nothing changes. But then you work in the direction of the plasma, you don't need any vein. That's why we don't see blood, you can cut a brain, there is no need because brain, especially in the emotional part works only through plasma transfer information, what it receives and what it reduces, and in what level it sends gravitational magnetic fields out for the rest of the physicality to interaction with, and that becomes the information. This is why with ILS we have a um, fairly good understanding of it, we're understanding more and more. <coughs> because when emotionally you reject it, emotionally you fail twice, you don't want to exist. What do you do? You send the information to physical part, that's it, you're shutting down. It's your job to stop, to start the process. Then the physical part, through regeneration of the cells, what it has to be done, which section to be disconnected, sets up the scene for the order which has come from the boss. There is something very important which is, will be, a will, it's in the book number nine, it's called the structure of the soul of the man which applies to all the souls in the universe. There are positions where the soul decides to end the physicality. Because of what is soul is aware in the dimension, in interactions with the other souls. So that determines, the soul determines the end of a life, in physical condition. This is beyond the understanding of the man, but in so many ways, when the soul detaches itself from physicality, the physicality has to end up its life. This is something which a man has not understood, because it's beyond his intelligence. So as much as you can decide to kill yourself physically, or the body decides through degeneration to degenerate, to, to die, the soul has the same access. So, it's not because of, but in knowing why is to happen through the interaction of the souls with the other souls. This is what I was explaining to knowledge seekers um, recently. I've never seen your, I mean, somebody doesn't seen your uncle. To me, your uncle is a stranger, but to you is an uncle, it's a telephone number connection. And this telephone number connection has a direct access to everything. It's like a SOS line. So, when the soul decides in some cases to end up the life, soul has the same access as the physicality decides to jump off a cliff. It's for the separation of what is to happen and the body, the soul does not want to be involved in it. Next question. The death wish to be reversed, uh, you have to do what we do with uh, ILS. And in MS cases, as we are learning more and more. Let me explain to you something very clear. Even though we have all the knowledge, we have to understand the working of the physicality of the man. And translating the full knowledge back is the hardest part because man keeps on changing, evolves. It's not that not having the knowledge, but it's how to triggering the knowledge in this, in this physicality of the man on this planet. The death wish cannot be changed by going to the emotional, but understanding why the emotional has created that wish, and overcoming by physical m motion, to show that the physical part does not accept the shutdown, the death. Then you can have the same effect in reverse on the, on the thalamus. What does this mean? 
we understand the structure, what order has come in from the brain, in the emotional part to shut down, because of a failure, because of the um, lack of whatever, because if you speak to anybody who has a um, ILS, you'll find out they have a wish, death wish, or a failure wish, which do not expect their expectation. Why do we see so much huge number of sports people with ILS nowadays? A lot of actresses, a lot of what we talked before. Because they do not reach the expectation, what they were expecting emotionally, so to them it's not worth living to carry the physicality. What you got to do, is to keep the physicality going, without the interaction of the court from the emotional part. But at the same time, in a way, cuddling and kissing the emotional part, you want to live, I want to be here, you are two partners. Don't forget the physical part is the leech part. So, when you push the physicality, you can, with your system, especially which we developed, override or create a balanced condition in the emotional part, and at the same time, revitalize the connections with the physical part. We've seen this very recently in the, in the ILS case, where other parts of the physical part are still working, because of the support it receives from the system, and by accident or whatever, the systems were not used for one part of the body. And we see that part of body is slowly going back to uh, the same as was before. Before we intervened. Because, through the systems we developed, we can reach the emotional part to hold it at bay, till one day it decides, okay, I want to live now, I take over them, it was a wrong order. And then, at the same time, you support the interaction of the physical part. This is one of the reasons with ILS people, till day I don't find a reason to live, it's a waste of time to try, because whatever I do, they overwrite, they evolve, they change the position to reach, to complete what they wish. It's like if you try to stop somebody jumping off a cliff, you save them from the bridge, they go and jump off another bridge. Because you cannot stop that process. And this is the same with Alice. The death wish, it's, the death wish is not just physical. The death wish you look at, the death wish comes even with physicality. With sexual physicality, we see a lot of it. A lot of doctors don't understand, it's another kind of death wish, which emotionally, you detach yourself from a man, or a woman, so, physically, because you emotionally detach yourself, physically the body show, does not show any interaction or reaction to that person. You go to another woman, to another man, and you find you're as good as, you were 18 years old, in loving, caring and the rest. It's another, the emotional suicide is, is very much directed and controlled by the person. Not, through, and through the emotional part. That's why we see people, I, it's been, I studied this for some time, how come so many people in England, where I lived for years, are still women on their own? Because they loved somebody during the war, and he died in the war. I couldn't understand, I, I lived in this environment, because it was very a strange feeling to me, that we see so many old women on their own. You don't see that much with the men, but you see it with the women. And when you talk to them, they speak about the love they had with the man, or he was married and they went to the war and died 40 years ago, the war is already over for 60 years, but they're still there. Because, Physically, they say they exist, but emotionally, they have disconnected themselves from the feeling. In so many ways, I would call suicide of um, death of the emotions in respect to loving. So, um, suicide is not just in one version. Suicide has a, uh, has, has different names in different versions. Next question. Outside, 
If you break your leg, you put a reactor outside the leg. You can't put it inside, then you go, how are you going to get it out? No, you can, oh, you can do it, but to use a few broken the leg, why do you put it in, take it out? You always put it outside. Outside, on the broken place? On the broken, but you have to know what you do, because if you don't do it the right way, it doesn't come out the right way. Just ask this, this yes. Question. Yeah, I think they heard it, we answered it. Okay. okay. Any other question, or we call it a day? Well, we are up over two hours now. We were going to keep the health uh, workshops to two hours, so perhaps yeah, okay. it is time. Um, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we leave it to next Friday for the uh, for the what do you call it the fourth health lectures by Elia. The and point is that as you so let me explain something. It was beautiful to sit here and listen to Elia because she carried in a very scientific way, as she's a doctor, she can connect it. And in a way, when she speaks, she spoke to start to speak, we go to the beginning of the session, uh, speaking about the emotional part and everything else, because we discussed it yesterday. To her, she understands, she sees as a medical doctor. And it must have been a lot of shock to a lot of people hearing her explaining, this is the emotional part, because this was, this is unknown. So, this is the way that our teaching is going to be. We teach the experts that they can translate the knowledge in the language of the others, in their level to understand. And we start doing more and more of this, as we gather more, um, what do you call it, time to do these things. So, um, these kind of interactions with the expert, with the scientist, will increase more. We announce very soon a new development in the same direction too. Uh, in the space and agricultural side. Uh, and I thank Kelia for such a wonderful presentation, explanation, and all the pictures. She made everything very clear, the way I tried to explain to her um, in past couple of days. And then, this is how the teaching will go. Doctors will teach doctors, because they understand the essence of it and what it is, and then we add to it. And thank you very much, Rick, and the rest in the background for working to make these things happen. And so, uh, uh, next week you'll carry on from the uh, structure of the face? Uh, we uh, don't know. Elia will decide. <laughs> okay, it'll be a mystery. Until, are, uh, I, I'm, I'm a puppet in the box. They take me out, <laughs> and then they put me back in the box. She decides what comes out of the box. Right. Okay, so well, I'm sure that'll come up on the uh, live stream feed. The uh, same time. Oh, you're breaking up there. That's a, I can't hear what you're saying. Try it again, please. Sorry, Mr. Cash. Hello, can, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah. No problem. It's breaking up. Uh, hello. Okay, there is. I can again. hear you. It's back again. This is Thank like you. NASA getting lost in space. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, feel yeah. Like I said it's like NASA getting lost in the space. I feel like uh, we're talking <laughs> to Mars here. There is, uh, there is, by the way, something which is irrelevant to this, but I congratulate the Indians in achieving a great breakthrough in uh, being able to enter Mars atmosphere in the past 48 hours. Um, as I was watching it, I, it's taken them nine months to get there, and I was telling my son, oh, we'll be there in about less than a few minutes, very soon, when the man understand. Uh, so, we have to see if there are real Martians on the Mars. Uh, I, I thank you very much for all the time, and I give the headphone to Elia to finish the session. Thank you very much, bye-bye. Thank you, Mr. Kesh. So, thank you for my side also, thank you for attention, question, and the support from the Rick and Vince and all the stage guys. Because of them, everything is going uh, really good with the live stream and announcement. And uh, I just want to ask all the public who is the listening the workshop to spread the information that for the workshop and 
to support the tech, tech team who, because of them, everything is uh, happen. We need a donation to the to Kishe Foundation on the link which you are able to find out on the site of the Kishe Foundation. Thank you, Rich and Vince, a lot for your effort to make the live stream and everything on the internet happen and all other guys which I don't know, they support the technical stuff of the Kishe Foundation. Thank you a lot and appreciate you if you send me emails directly into the email and not just uh, write me in different places like uh, Facebook or, or the forum or some private messages because I'm not able to find out all of them. Thank you very much to everyone. Could you give us that email address uh, again there, Elliot? Health, Kiev and gmail.com. Health, Kiev and gmail.com. Okay, healthkf at uh, gmail.com. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Yes, thank you very much to everyone and see you for the next Friday. We'll be all together again. Thank okay, you. Thank you, um, Elia and Mr. Cash and others. All right, that ends the uh, third uh, Cash Health Workshop. Yeah. Thank right. you. Bye bye from us. Yeah, the ice. Yeah, this is the zero. Then you you have one, two, three, four. They are under the pictures numbers. Okay, so this is the first one. With these pictures, I want to show you different layers of the head. If you see how the head is also have a layering, and uh, we start with the skin, then go the derma, then the muscles, and then the bones of, of the skull, and then inside of the bones, you will place your, your brain and all the structure of your head. Then the picture first one, please. We delay. Can you hear us? Now the next one. First. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is one. Okay, yeah, this is the first one. Okay. So on that picture, you are able to see the bones of the skull. Actually, the skull separate in two parts. This is the facial parts and neurological parts. And it is depends what kind of function have a skull. Because of that, it separates to the two parts. The facial bones, they are really up to 14. And their function is just to form the face and to keep safe all the structure which is uh, behind the bones. The, the bones of the face, this is the bones of your joints, this is the lower joint, what is the mandibula, the upper joint, this is the maxilla, then you go to the zygomatic joints, which you form it, your bottom of your eyes orbit, in the middle of the face it is the bone, are the bones of your nose, and the structure inside of that bones, they are, they are formed, separation of your nose, it, it's important because of the um, how much air and canalize the amount of the air we pass from environment inside of your uh, system. Then you have the bones which form it your eyes orbit. Everything of that is belongs to your face. Other bones which is much bigger and much wide, they belongs to your neuro skull because they are formed the cavity which is the place in your brain. 
So the next picture, please. Osa. This is the hole where the lower joint just make the connection with temporally bone and the zygomatic bone. This is some kind of hole. This is for purpose made it there it, and related with the joint. What I mentioned to you in the previous picture. So that area, it's important. Again, I say to make a connection between the emotional part of the brain and the physical part of the brain. Just keep in mind again. Okay. I just give you the clues about the skull. It's not that anatomically lecture. I just give you the point what is the Im important of explanation of Mr. Cash after that. Okay. Then we go to the number five picture. Number five picture represented you development embryology development of nervous system. So we are ready or not? Because okay. Okay, thank you. So the embryology development of the nervous system started in the third week of embryo development in the womb. It's important that neural system formed from ectoderm, ectoderm layer of three embryology layers. They are endoderm, ectoderm, mesoderm. So in the third week of embryology development in the womb, from ectoderm starts to form the neural plate. This is the outside layer, new one above ectoderm. And it's important for you that knowledge to know because ectoderm is base of your skin. So above your skin, may say that, you form it your neural system. And then you'll be get it what is the relation and what that important it is. So you see on the first part of that picture, 80 days. <gasps> So 80 days, you have formation of the neural plate above of ectoderm. And the 20 days on this, on this neural layering, you have some kind of evagination in the middle. That evagination formed all the main channel of your brain from that evagination after weeks starts to form at all the ventriculars in your brain and the end of this evagination goes through spinal cord down through all your spine. So in the first part of the picture, you see how is formed your brain, central nervous system. And the bottom part of, your, of, your, of that picture which is mentioned on the 20 days, you see how it starts to form it your spinal cord. Okay, we go to the 22nd day. The 22nd day, you see again on your part where is placed the central nervous system, how they starts to form two ventricles. In the middle, in the green color, it's showing the evagination. Then above, I mean, uh, between ectoderm and this neur neural layer, you see formation of the main channel. But how you see is this between neural layer and ectoderm. It's again connection between your skin and your nervous system. Okay, then we go for 24 days. We see how develop the central nervo, neural system and is so similar on the beginning to the nervous system of the fish. If you are whatever saw the nervous system of the fish, the beginning of the human nervous system in the womb is 
completely similar like a formation on that on the fish. Okay, then we go to the next picture. This is number six. We are ready? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, just if I just check it's not slow down for me. Okay, so the this picture what they show you. And the fourth week of your embryonal development, from this ne neural layer start the formation of neural tube. And this neural tube separated to the four parts. You see in pink, this is your forebrain with yellow. This is your mind brain with green. This is your hind brain. And with blue, this is your spinal cord. Then, when you develop during the weeks, all these different parts, they uh, start to be developed to different kind of function. So, from the green part, origin, the male encephalon, that is the medulla of your brain. is the number two. It's visible your skull in inside in like you look on side. Yeah, could you please Rick pause the picture number two. Ah, okay, because for us it's just we stay in the first one, the live stream, just delay. Okay, so, the, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay, so for the second picture, you're able to see the skull on site, and there are all the bones of your neural skull, where your brain just plays it. So the first one is forming your forehead. This is the frontal bone. Then goes to your partial bone, which is the bigger and the white one. And then you go to your occipital bone. On side, this is the temple, is made uh, the side uh, formation of the skull. This is the temporal bone, it's like that. Inside of the temporal bone, is the acoustic bones which made you ears, inner ears. So on that place between the temporal bones, the zygomatic bones and the mandibula, you form the joint. What you just keep in mind this joint because it's important of explanation of Mr. Kish after that, that that joint which is formed between I just repeat, the temporal bone, the zygomatic bone, and mandibula, they form the joint connection between these all bones. And this joint is so important of relation between your physical and emotional part of the brain. Just keep in mind this joint. Okay. Then... Just one second. The next picture is the same visible. Then could you please Rick put the number four? The number four just give you view is like uh, on the bottom of your skull. And from the bottom of your skull, you are able to see in the middle one hole from where just go through the spinal cord through all your spine. Okay, so this is the bottom of your skull. Again, just find out on the picture is written mandibular fold.
Okay, just doing a sound test here, and we seem to be going live on live stream. This is this will be the third Kesh Health workshop, uh, third in this series. There was a couple of other health workshops previous, but this is the third in this series, along with the Knowledge Seeker workshops, and um, <clears throat> we'll be live with. Um, uh, Dr. Elia Kostova and uh, Mr. Kesh from the Spaceship Institute, as well as some of the other knowledge seekers from the Spaceship Institute. I think Marco and John and uh, maybe even Armin will show, I'm not sure. And so, uh, without further ado, uh, I know, well, a little bit more ado. Uh, Elia is going to be talking about the skull and the uh, bones of the face in particular today and um, we'll be uh, relating that to the emotional part of the brain as well. Okay, um, Elia, are you there at the Spaceship Institute? Yeah, hello to everyone. Um, good morning, good evening, whatever, to all the world from Spaceship Institute. So today we start with the third health workshop, and the subject is the skull bones, the face bones, and how they're related with the emotional part of the brain. For that purpose, we will uh, go like a review of the old skull bones and the embryology development of the neural system because it's important to follow the embryology development of the neural system and see in in what state and in which part just um, starts to develop the emotional part of the brain. So we started with the first picture, please, Rick, could you show on the live stream? It's number zero in your list. It's not that, the number zero, the face, the face picture is just picture for a live stream announced. Find the zero picture, number zero. They are just numbered like a pictures. It's not that. Yeah, okay, but you're supposed to make little small. In live stream, it's so big, it's not that visible. Okay, thank you. So 